It is time to round up a big topic from the week. President Obama announced this week plans to open embassies in both the U.S. and Cuba. The Cuban government says, however, there is still a ways to go before its relationship with the United States can be normalized. Cuba is demanding an end to the U.S. embargo and the return of the U.S. naval base at Guantanamo Bay. It also wants an end to American radio and TV broadcasts aimed at the island. Republicans are still opposed to the idea of opening the embassies, including Senator Ted Cruz, who says it's a huge mistake. But President Obama has vowed to move forward without the GOP's support. That's our topic this half hour. We want to hear from you on our Fox 26 Facebook page. You can also weigh in on Twitter. Be sure to use the hashtag Fox 26 for life. Joining us live in the newsroom is our roundup panel led by our senior legal analyst, Chris Tritico, our news analyst, Mustafa Tamiz, and public policy analyst, Jackie Valley. Good morning again, guys. Good morning. All right, so what do you think about the uh, president's decision and uh, the Republicans' criticism? You know, the president said earlier, uh, last year, I guess, last year the president said a 50-year embargo with Cuba has done nothing to change the political regime that's been running Cuba uh, since Castro took over in 1959 and it's time for a change. It's time to, to look at Cuba in a different way. The Republicans immediately said, we won't support you in this. As a matter of fact, we won't give you any money to open an embassy in Cuba. The non-starter on this whole issue is giving back Guantanamo Bay. Uh, anything else that, that, that the president negotiates is probably, can, we can probably live with. Uh, Mustafa, if he agrees to give back Guantanamo Bay, it'll never happen. Actually, I'm sorry, he will never agree to give back Guantanamo Bay. I think, I think this is part of the conversation of diplomatic between two countries, and, and you start with negotiations that way. But I, I think that it's interesting, uh, Senator Ted Cruz, who is a descendant from Cuba and born in Canada, uh, talking about U.S. embassies. I guess he knows a lot about U.S. US embassies in foreign lands. Um, Marco Rubio is also running. He's also from Cuban descent. And opposed. Um, and opposed to it. And, and th there, is, there is a small contingency of people around the country that are against it. But for the most part, Americans really want to open up diplomatic ties with Cuba. It's been long, long uh, awaiting. And, and, and for the most part, it hasn't happened because of Florida. And Florida is a, a key presidential state. Uh, and Florida's always contentious, and there's been uh, there's been this fear uh, politically that if you open up diplomatic ties with Cuba, that you will lose a presidential election. And I think that it's about time that we start moving forward and opening up diplomatic relations with Cuba. The House Republicans and the Senate Republicans said when he announced this, we will never appropriate a penny to open an embassy in Cuba. How's he going to do it? Who knows? I mean, he's gone around Congress before. I mean, this is the kind of president who doesn't really care what they think, and, and he's demonstrated that with a lot of his executive uh, actions. Um, w one of the things that you see in, in, in the problems, why we have a, a problem with this, is because um, we don't really feel comfortable uh, lining up the pockets of Fidel and Raul Castro. It's still a, a run by thugs. It's, there's still a lot of crime there. You've seen very little change. Even you said in your introduction, things have not changed much. So if things haven't changed, why do we feel that opening this up will help things change and move forward when it's still run by the same people and, and same uh, relatives that was run it, running it before? They have proven to us that they're not going to change. They have proven to us that it's not going to be a Democrat state. They've proven to us that it's it's they have no um, need to help the residents who are living there. So why are we going to open up our pockets and help them get richer? I want to talk about that coming back. I got to go to Sally. She's monitoring our social media. Okay, let's take a look at the tweets that are coming in from Texas Senator Ted Cruz here. He says, how sad is it that under the Obama administration, the U.S. is going to have an embassy in Havana before we have one in Jerusalem? He goes on to say it's unacceptable and a slap in the face of a close ally that the U.S. will have an embassy in Havana before one in Jerusalem. Well, I, he's looking for a way to attack this, and I, 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 he has, I think he has better attacks than, than, than comparing this to Israel. But I want to talk about, I want to go back to what Sally was, I mean, Jackie was talking about. You know, President Nixon opened relations with China. Uh, President uh, Clinton opened relations, I think it was Clinton, opened relations with Vietnam. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? Well, look, 
we've, we've had sanctions there for 50 years and nothing has changed. It's about time we try something different. And in terms of, you know, Fidel Castro and Raul Castro, I mean, we deal with dictators around the world, uh, unfortunately. Where we, we have we send, embassies. We send aid to, to them all the time. And this one is right across 90 miles from the shore uh, of Florida. And it's time that we started creating some diplomatic relationships with them. It's, it's, it's unfair. It's an inconsistent policy. It's an inconsistent foreign policy this nation has had for many decades. And it's time we change it. Because for the last 50 years, what we've done hasn't worked. We've got to try something different. Is it a little bit of a game changer that all of our partners uh, in, in Europe have open relations with Cuba and we're really left isolated as the only country, one of the very few countries left with any sanctions against Cuba? Um, I don't know if it's a game changer or not, but I think that going back to your question about um, what's the difference, the difference is under this particular president and when he's made moves and, and tried to make moves and inroads with, uh, for instance, Russia and Iran, we've seen exactly what's happened there. So uh, you ask what's the difference and how is it a game changer? The game changer is we have a, per, a, a tip of, um, a current administration and a current president who has a bad track record when he's made such inroads or tried to make some inroads in other countries. And so that's why we're hesitant, we as in, um, not just Republicans, but we as U.S. citizens, we're very hesitant when we see him making this move again.